Jones. There we are, my dear. receiving your instructions from Mrs. Langtry. Should any problems arise, you will naturally refer them to her. Do you wish to add anything, my dear? No. I'm sure we'll get on famously. Will you be requiring supper, madam? Uh, no, not tonight. We shall probably retire shortly. Uh, just make sure that Mrs. Langtry's things are unpacked, will you? Certainly, sir. That will be all. May I say again, welcome home, sir, madam. I don't think they like me. Nonsense. How could they fail to, hmm? <laughs> Oh, there is one thing, my dear. We're not in the Channel Islands now. On the mainland, things are a little more formal. It doesn't do to show undue familiarity to the servants. They don't like it. I see. Firmness with a slight distance. That is the correct attitude. Yes. <laughs> it's a beautiful house, Edward. Do you like it? I chose it, of course, for Jane. It was her house? No, she never lived to see it. Still. Well, perhaps you'd uh, better go up now. Huh? You'll be coming up to it? After a moment, yes. I'll just give you time to... Uh... Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Mary will show you the way. Oh, madam? Yes, thank you. Good night. Good night, madam. You look very lovely, my dear.
Good morning, my dear. I couldn't think where you were. Well, you were sleeping so peacefully, I didn't want to wake you. <laughs> what are you doing? What do you think? Getting dressed. Come back to bed. What? Lily! I'm sorry about last night. I didn't please you. But you did. I'll make it up to you, I promise you. Lily, please, please. Everything was perfectly normal. You have nothing to reproach yourself but with. But I, I just feel... <clears throat> please, uh, Lily. Cover yourself. It's, it's morning. I, I was perfectly satisfied last night. If I've not shown my gratitude sufficiently, then I'm, I'm sorry. But it isn't something one talks about. I excuse you this time because you are inexperienced in these matters. But I can assure you, I have absolutely no complaints. Let us have no more of these unnecessary demonstrations. Now, you go back to bed if you wish. I'll, uh, I'll get Evans to send you up a tray. Well, as you wish. After breakfast, I'm, uh, I'm going out. Where are you going? Well, I have some business to attend to. It may take some time. Now, you have a restful day. any lunch? I'm waiting for Mr. Langtry. Mr. Langtry indicated that he would be unlikely to be home for lunch. I shall wait. Very good, madam. told you were lying down. Oh, I couldn't. Are, are you all right? Yes, of course. Where have you been? Well, I went over to Buckler's Hard. I wanted to see how Gertrude was getting on. Gertrude? Yes, one of my aunts. Well, she's a cutter, really. Oh, I, I couldn't think where you were. Oh, and you were worried about me. There, there. <laughs> she, um, she looks quite promising, actually. I plan to race her this summer. Why didn't you take me with you? Oh, shipyard is no place for a woman. So, what have you been doing with yourself all day, eh? Waiting. Waiting for you. What, all day? Ah, hmm? oh, that's better. I mean, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Naturally, I assumed that you had things to do about the house and so on. <laughs> Still, early days yet. I'll, uh, I'll work out a routine for you before I go off. You're going somewhere? No, I do have to keep my yachts in trim. I've got the International at Le Havre, and then, of course, there's Cows and the Thames Race. To London? No, oh, no, no, not as far as that, thank heavens. No, from Nor to Erith. Hmm. Well, what's for dinner? I wasn't able to get anything. Get anything? I couldn't go out. I didn't have any money. Any money? Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, we're not in Jersey now. Ladies don't haggle in the marketplace. You... Tell your servants what you want. They get it, and the tradesman sends a bill in at the end of the month. I didn't know. Oh, you silly goose. Well, I'm sure there's something in the house. <laughs> Wait till I tell them. Oh, no, don't tell anyone. Please, Edward. Hmm? I, I, I didn't know. Oh, what am I going to do with you, eh? <laughs> Edward. Mm hmm? When you go sailing, may I come with you? May I? 
Not possible, my dear. Why not? Well, it's not going to be a pleasure cruise. It's a dangerous sport. I'd be with you. Yes, but as I've explained, I intend to sail the Gertrude. It's only half the size of the red gauntlet. Hardly any cabin space. I don't mind. Yes, my dear, but we will not be able to be together. I'm going to be the skipper. I know. I don't want to be left alone, please. Look, if it doesn't work out, if I'm a burden to you, you could let me off for a few days to stay with my parents in Jersey. I've never been alone. I couldn't stand it, please. We'll see. We'll see. By my reckoning, we've passed the marker, boy. We're clear of them all. What? We've won? We've won! We've won! We've won! <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how it felt to win the international <laughs> yacht race. An achievement indeed. <laughs> and the reception afterwards. I've never known anything so exciting. You must be very proud of it. Oh, I am. Um, I don't know what he was thinking of to let you risk yourself like that. He shouldn't have allowed you to come with him. <laughs> I should imagine if Lily wanted to go, she'd find a way to convince him. <laughs> very true, Father. Looked up for weeks on end in a small boat with all those sailors. I've no doubt Lily managed. Mm, it's wonderful to see you. And you, Clem. How does it feel now you've left the army? <laughs> Oh, it was so kind of Edward to bring me to visit you all. He was coming here anyway. Or didn't you know that? Reggie? Isn't it time someone told her? Why do you think Clem's here? He's studying law. Doesn't that suggest anything to you? Oh, Reggie, that's enough. Very well. If you'll excuse me. What's the matter? Only his habitual insolence. Your brother's becoming quite ungovernable. What did he mean? What did Reggie mean about Edward coming here anyway? You really don't know. William. For the past month or so, Mr. Langtree has been advertising his yachts for sale. For sale? It appears that for some time he's been living beyond his means, considerably beyond. Now that he also has a wife to support, well, the creditors will not wait. But his family owns the shipping line. His father left him money. All spent years ago. Father asked me to look into it, Lily, to protect your interests. All Edward has is a small allowance, not nearly enough. The yachts will have to go. Not Red Gauntlet. She's already sold. With luck, that should cover most of the debt. The sale of the others should see you all right for a while. However, since he has no profession, I'll fetch my papers. He, he was at Oxford. He studied law like you. Unfortunately, he took no examinations, so he has no qualifications. I'm afraid he's misrepresented himself, rather, both as a man of wealth and as a scholar. Still, you will have enough to live on, provided you're careful. But his days of extravagance are over. Well, well, well. So young Lochinvar turned out to be the old man of the sea, eh? That's not very kind. Oh, my dear sister. He married an oaf. An unworthy, boring oaf. I warned you, but you wouldn't see it. Only his beautiful yacht 
And now it's sunk without trace. Oh, Reggie. You sold yourself. You sold yourself to a pompous bore because you thought he was going to carry you magically across the waves to London. Why do you hurt me? Hurt you? You've no idea what it means to be hurt. I have. You were the sun and the moon, the only light in the universe. The island was our world, but you couldn't wait to leave it. Try to understand. It's different for you. How? You're a man. You can do as you please, go where you choose. For you, the island isn't a prison because you know whenever you like, you can just leave. But I'd never have left you. Yes, you would. One day. Don't you see, the only way for me to escape was to marry. At least Edward seemed kind and generous. And rich! Please. Don't touch me. Keep out of my sight. I do have to maintain a certain standard. After all, I have sold the red gauntlet. I must keep the Gertrude at least. Can you afford to run her? Huh? Well, that's, that's why we're leaving, sir. I'm going to pay off the crew as soon as we get to Southampton and then lay her up. When the circumstances improve... If you could find work. Work? I'm a gentleman. I can't go looking for work. No, no, I suppose not. Forgive me, but... Uh... Could not your family help a little more? Well, I, I took Lily to meet them in Belfast last month, sir, as you know. Yes. Uh, well, they, they liked her very much. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, do, do please sit down. Oh, yes, thank you. Unfortunately, my elder brother made it clear that in the present state of the family shipping business, it was not possible to increase my allowance. Pity. I shall just have to pull in my horns a bit, that's all. Well, after all, I'm not a pauper. My allowance is sufficient. For the moment, yes. But what if you have children? Yes, yes, that would do it. Yes, the, the, the family would be more amenable then, you see? Yes, they do the right thing. Ah, ah, the ladies. We were wondering where you got to. Well, we were looking for Reggie, but he seems to have vanished. I'm beginning to think he's trying to avoid me. I do hope he won't be late again. We have Lord Ranley coming to lunch, so we can't wait. Lord Ranley? He's here on his annual visit with his daughters. Ah! <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be in Jersey, and my daughters enjoy the trip. But I had no idea I'd have the honour of seeing you, Mrs. Uh, Lang. Lily will still be Lord Randall. <laughs> How kind. I had no idea you were in Jersey. Oh, just a short stay, Your Lordship. In fact, we're leaving this evening on the ebb tide. Ah, oh, yachting man, are you? Oh, yes. indeed, I am, sir, yes. His daughters. Does he think no one realises he brings new ones every few years and they keep getting younger? <laughs> Have you seen Reggie? He went out riding before breakfast. Yes, he's done that every morning. I haven't seen him for days. Surely he'll at least say goodbye. He felt very strongly about your wedding. I know. If he liked Edward more, perhaps... He wants to see you, I know, but, but not with him. Well, it's hard to explain, Lily. You don't have to. What are you two conspiring about, eh? <laughs> Come along, Lily. Time we packed. <laughs> Mustn't miss the tide. That was a delightful meal. Thank you, Mrs. Langton. Not at all, Doctor. Yes, I don't know how you ladies do it. To have guests sprung on you at the last minute and yet produce something so splendid. <laughs> if it had been left to Lily, I'm sure all that we would have had would have been a boiled egg. Oh, come now, Edward. <laughs> <would you? laughs> oh, that's a fact. Always got a nose in a book. Unfortunately, never the household accounts. Frightful muddle. <laughs> I expect you've always had someone else to take care of such things, Mrs. Langtry. Yes, my mother. Mm, wonderful woman. Runs the deanery like clockwork. Of course, things are much cheaper on the islands. Yes, so I believe. Yes, never know they were all as poor as church mice. <laughs> Still, teaches the island girls thrift, I suppose. How to get good value. My first wife, Jane. She was a Jersey girl. Marvel at running her home. Rang, sir. Ah, yes, yes, the brandy, please. I thought I'd get a, another two days fishing in before the season ends. I've been tying a couple of flies I want you to see. Now, come and have a look at this. Yes. A good week in Scotland. Oh, really? Well, I haven't been up there for quite some time. Now then, what do you think of this little fellow, eh? Yeah. Look at that. Oh, most Isn't impressive. it a beauty? Yeah, it is. Although I say it myself, it shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. Oh, thank you, Edward. Thank you. 
Yes, what I did, you see, was I tied the hackle slightly higher. And this gives it much yes. more chance. Yes. Yes. Well, right. I only wanted to say good night. Oh, you're not going to deprive us of your company, are you, my dear? I'm a little tired, forgive me. Oh. Well, if, if you must. I'm afraid we're neglecting you, Mrs. Langtry. Not a bit of it. Thank you again for a very fine dinner. Cook will be pleased. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Langtry. You're a lucky man, Edward. You have a very lovely wife. Yes, rather. If you, um, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, do um, help yourself. Why did you leave us? I told you I'm tired. But my friends want to see you. Hang it all, you might at least oblige when we have guests. You're not still moping because your brother hasn't answered your letters, are you? I mean, what does it matter? Reggie and I are very close. Oh, don't be so childish. Now, you're a grown woman. Start behaving like one. Pull yourself together and come downstairs. I told you I'm not well enough. This is your way of paying me back, isn't it? Because I went away for a few days. No, no, really, I... I don't feel well. Oh, you're as strong as a horse. In what way, not well? I have a headache I can't get rid of. I can't sleep at night, nausea. You mean you've been sick? Last night and again this morning. Well, now. Well, well. We'd better get Dr. Lewis to have a look at you. Oh, no, no, I'll be all right. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me before? Tell you what? Oh, come on, Lily. Now, don't be so naive. Um, no, no, I don't think <laughs> it's... It's all right. We'll let Dr. Lewis decide, shall we? <laughs> now, you put your feet up, and I'll go and fetch it. Oh, no, Edward, please. It's all right. It's perfectly natural. Clever girl. <laughs> this is just what the family has been waiting for. Wait till I tell them. <laughs> Took Langtry over an hour to land it. Full ten pounds. <laughs> he certainly has a knack, I'll say that. <laughs> Dr. Lewis, I'm sorry to trouble you, but I wonder, would you have a look at my wife? Is something wrong? Well, she's, um, she's a little under the weather. I think that's perfectly natural, though. I would appreciate it, though, if you'd examine her. Now? Mm. Well, I don't have any of my things with me, but... Well, certainly. There's a maid with her. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, Evans will show you the way. Thank you. Well, Harrison, I think we may have some news shortly. Oh, a boy, of course. Oh, I don't really mind. <laughs> the family will be equally pleased either way. They're old Quaker stock, set a lot of store by grandchildren. Edward, I see you a moment. Well, it's all right. I've, uh, I've explained it all to Harrison. <laughs> well, there's no cause for alarm yet. The fever will take some time to develop. Fever? I shall go home and fetch her a sleeping draught. She'll need to conserve her strength. Uh, yes, but uh, when, when is it due? I'm sorry? The child. She's going to have a child, isn't she? No, there's no sign of that. None at all. Are you sure? I mean, I, I, I naturally thought that... What's, what's all this about fever? You must prepare yourself. What for? What do you mean? It will undoubtedly be severe. I'm very much afraid it may be typhoid. Oh, my. 
this way. How is she? This is a change. I don't want to. Can't you do something? It's been two weeks now. Only keep her as quiet as possible. Try to reduce the fever. Well, and how's the patient today? Tired of lying in bed. I can't leave her for a moment, Doctor. She keeps trying to get up. <laughs> She's worse than any jailer. Well, on my order. Now, nurse, you go and have a cup of tea. I'll sit with Mrs. Langtry for a while. Are you sure, Doctor? Yes. Off you go. Oh, thank you. Now, are you really feeling better? Much. Yes, your eyes are a lot clearer. Tongue? Mm -hmm. Any more headaches? No. And what about the rash? Is it fading? Gone. I don't believe it. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's much improved. Well, I was hoping to see Mr. Langtry today. Oh, he's gone out, I expect. Yes. Some days I don't see him at all. No one except you and the nurse. I'm so grateful to you for coming to see me every day. You're, you're my prize patient. How long will it be before I'm really better? Well, you've made a remarkable recovery, as you know, but it'll probably be weeks, perhaps months, before you're properly fit again. Will I have to stay in bed? Mm -hmm. For a time. Then you can get up, provided you stay indoors. Oh, with no one to talk to, I'll go mad. Have your husband for company? Oh, he's worse than no one. I think he even enjoys my being ill. It means he doesn't have to make conversation. <laughs> well, you friends? No one. No one except you. You're the first person who's been kind to me since my marriage. I've never been so alone. I never even knew what it was to be lonely until I came to this house. Perhaps it might do you good to get away for a bit. Do you both good. When you're fit enough, perhaps you could go and stay with your parents in Jersey. No, Edward would only complain. Help me. Help me. Do anything I could. There's only one place I can get better if I stay here. I never shall. I know it. You told your husband. He won't listen to me, but if you spoke to him. I would have to be 
sure. Well, there's no one else I can turn to. If you don't help me, you might just as well have let me die. London? You can't be serious. I assure you, Edward, I am. I would have thought that's the worst possible place for anyone to get back their health. In Lily's... In Mrs. Langtree's case, it's not merely a matter of air and rest, but of... of distraction. <laughs> she's harped on about it ever since we first met. Precisely. She's convinced herself it's only there that she'll recover. And indeed, the milder weather and stimulating environment could prevent a serious relapse. Well, I'll tell you what I told her, shall I? I've no money to spare to go jaunting off for weeks to London. Oh, it's not a matter of weeks, but of months. Perhaps even permanent. Do you know what you're saying? Do you expect me to shut up the house, get rid of all the servants? Do you honestly expect me to do that? It depends how much you value her. Rightly or wrongly, she feels that you've neglected her during her illness. And indeed, at times, you have been conspicuous by your absence. I... I've had things to do. I... I didn't want to get involved. I beg your pardon. Three years ago, my first wife, my Jane, she died. Consumption. It's most distressing. I thought that Lily would... I didn't want to go through all that again. I'm speaking for your own good as well as hers. If you don't move, I'm afraid your wife's life, very probably, and your marriage most certainly are in danger. Spend hours at that window. I just like to watch the people going by. It'd be nice if we knew any of them. Oh, it doesn't matter. Don't you love it just to be here? Oh, and these rooms are very comfortable. A bit different from what we're used to. But it's such a good area behind Eaton Square. We're fighting the palace over the houses there. <laughs> Might as well be on the moon for the difference it makes to us. <laughs> You're only grumpy because you can't go fishing. What shall we do today? Well, do we have to do anything? I mean, we've seen every museum, every art gallery, every church within 20 miles. We could go exploring. Well, we'd get lost. We'd have to take cabs home. It's too expensive. Oh, don't be a spoil sport, and I'm feeling so much better already. Well, that's the reason we came. Yes, and I'm very grateful, Edward. Well, if you're feeling so much better, isn't it time you started being my wife again? Do you know what I mean? Soon. When I'm really better soon. Well, that's something. Let's go for a walk. We could go round St. James's Park and back along the Mall. Oh, a bit better than sitting here, I suppose. <laughs> Who's that? I suppose it's Mrs. Jenner. I'll go. This just came. I bought it straight up for Mrs. Langtry. Mrs. Langtry? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Jenner. It's a telegram for you. What is it? It's from your father. Your brother Reggie's had a riding accident. 
How bad is it? Lily, he's dying. I came as soon as I could. I'm sorry, Lily. The funeral could not be delayed. Did he suffer? Not towards the end. He was in the hands of his maker. The Almighty put an end to his sufferings. How did it happen? He was riding along the top of the cliffs. Too fast, as usual. He would not be told. His horse stumbled and threw him. And he went over. It was a miracle that he survived even for a few hours. He asked for you, my dear, but it was not to be. <laughs> where did it happen? At Portlet, where we used to go climbing. Was it an accident? Of course. He was too good a horseman. How can you be sure? Because we must be living. Whatever happened, he wished it on himself. It was no fault of yours. I'll never forgive myself for leaving. If you'd stayed, it would have been worse. It's like losing a part of myself. You and Reggie are the only ones that I was close to. As your husband? Why didn't he come with you? That he couldn't afford the fare for both of us. He'd feel humiliated if he didn't come on his own yacht. That's new, isn't it? Mother had it made for me. Oh. Do you like it? Well, it's a bit gloomy. <laughs> Still, I suppose you've got to show respect for your brother. You're not going to wear it all the time, are you? Only when we go out. Oh. Family all well? Yes. Mother's very upset, of course. Mm. Reggie was the youngest. What have you been doing? Oh, nothing much. Usual. Oh, I joined a club while you were away. Oh, really? Where? Oh, a little place. Victoria Sporting Club, actually. Still, gives you somewhere to go. Mm. Lily, I want to talk to you about this girl. The one you brought back with you from Jersey. Dominique. Mm. Italian, is she? Yes. Her father's Italian, I think. He was a sailor. He gave up the sea to work in the shipping yard at St. Helier. Mm -hmm. What do you think of her? Well, if your mother chose her, I suppose she'll do. What's she going to cost us? Three pounds a month. Oh, I, I know I could have to... offered her less, but she's so willing, Edward, and she'll be such a help. She used to work for Madame Nicole, the dressmaker. Well, I suppose if you need her. Thank you. Well, I'm off. Are you going out? Well, I, I thought I'd go to the club for a little while. But I've only just got back. Well, if you'd rather I didn't, I... No. No, no, it's important for you to meet people. Yes. I might see someone I know there. Huh. Good to have you back. Still raining. Mm, si, signora. Has Mr. Langley gone out? Bo? I think so, signora. Thank you. Oh, 
quanto è bellina. Lady Dudley, oh, she's very beautiful, isn't she, signora? Yes. Oh, you know her. No, only from the photographs. All the ladies of society, the beautiful ones, you, you see their photographs and pictures everywhere. Mrs. Wheeler, Mrs. Cornwallis West, Lady Ellsford, I know them all. They are all very friendly with the Prince of Wales. Mm. Oh, che peccato, signora, you do not go out more. For weeks you hardly go out. Oh, there are so few places one can go alone. But you could go with Mr. Lang. Besides, I still have to rest after my illness. Oh, Thank you, Dominic. There's an octopus in that tank. I couldn't see it. Royal Aquarium, indeed. <laughs> it is very hospitable. Uh, bless my soul. It's pretty little Miss Le Breton. Uh, no, it, it's something else now. Uh, Langtree, is it? Yes, Langtree. Edward, do you remember Lord Ramley? Oh, yes. How do you do? Uh, what's this? Morning? Oh, it's not one of your dear parents, I hope. My younger brother. Ah. Well, what a surprise to see you here. We're living in London now. Are you indeed? Well, you'll have to come out to my place at Fulham sometime. We keep open house every Sunday for tea. On the lawn, if the weather's decent. You remember my uh, daughters, don't you? Yes, of course. Well, how kind of you to invite us. Not at all. Any Sunday you're free, uh, you keep in touch now. <laughs> I don't suppose he meant it. We're hardly his sort, you know. Oh, well, I'll soon find out when we get there. Hmm? Do you like my hair like this, Edward? Mm. Yes, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> well, at least it's out of doors. Don't be too long, will you? Oh, excuse me. Okay. I found your dress, signora. Oh, thank you, Dominic. Do you think if I wear it like this, lower, perhaps? Hmm? Will it keep in place like that, oh, signora? Oh, yes, yes, if I pin it. Oh, no, <laughs> signora, the fashion is higher. Well, I think I'll just... Scissors, Dominic, please. Ma no, no, signora, che fa? Oddio, attenta! Don't worry. Just a little. This is intolerable. I told you he wasn't expecting us. But no, you had to come. Well, I, for one, don't enjoy being treated like a poor relation. Would you care for a cup of tea, Olivia? Thank you, George. That wouldn't be nice. Tony, who's that exquisite creature over there with the unhappy man? Oh, it's Mrs. Langtree. Her father's the Dean of Jersey. Charming. Yes. No conversation, though, and her husband's a frightful bore. Would you care to meet them? I've seldom heard such a resistible invitation. <laughs> Do me a favor, actually, if you talk to them for a few minutes. Lady Seabright, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Edward Langtree? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? No, 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 please, my dear. Oh, will you excuse me for just one moment? So, you are from the Channel Islands. That is obviously where you get your complexion. I've been watching you. You clearly find this gathering very dull. Not at all. It's rather amusing. Oh, you mustn't be too hard on them. They can't help being Philistines. I think you and I have quite a lot in common. Now, I give a little dinner party on Thursday evening for a few artist friends, writers, painters, and so on. You must come. We'd love to, Lady Zebra. You're really very pretty, Mrs. Langtree. You should be seen by people who appreciate that sort of thing. I've never been so humiliated, virtually ignored, except for that insufferable woman. Let me see, right? I thought she was very kind. I couldn't understand what she said half the time. Artistic conversation, I suppose. She's quite a well-known amateur artist. She patronised you. I liked her. Anything so long as it's a compliment. <laughs> What's that? Lady Seabright's card for next Thursday. Well, you can tear it up. Don't imagine we're going. Oh, but I want to go, Edward. What, to be humiliated and patronised again? 
by a riffraff of scribblers and artists. No, thank you. Uh, today I've learned my lesson. We're leaving London for good. You can throw that on the fire. No. Lily? I'm not a fool. I know what you've been doing. You thought if our life here was so dull and wearisome it became unbearable, I'd go back with you to Southampton. It is our home. I am not leaving here. You will do as I say. No. You will write to Lady Seabright and you will tell her that you are unwell. I haven't waited all these months to turn down the only invitation we've had. I am going on Thursday, even if I have to go alone. Mr. and Mrs. Langtry, how nice of you to come. Now, let me see, who do you know? No one, I'm afraid, Lady Seabright. Oh, you must call me Olivia. We're all quite informal here. My husband should be around somewhere. Ah, please, excuse me. Make yourself at home. I'll be with you in a moment. Well, are you satisfied? How soon can we leave? Please. Uh, yes, I think so. Who is the goddess oh, in the corner? Ah, come with me, I'll introduce you. Her name is Mrs. Langtry. Her father is the Dean of Jersey. Mrs. Langtry, may I present Mr. Millet? You've probably seen some of his work. Yes, at last year's summer exhibition. I admire your paintings very much. Thank you, that's very kind of you to say so. Please, excuse me. Mr. Millet, my husband, Edward Landry. How do you do? How do you do? Now, I particularly ask to meet you, not only because your beauty shines like a good deed in a naughty world, but because of the bond between us. What's that? Well, I'm Jersey-born myself, so that makes me your countryman. Though how, if you were daughter of the Dean, I never met you on such a small island, I can't imagine. Perhaps if you'd gone to church more often, we would have, <laughs> Mr. Millet. <laughs> John. Frederick, my dear fellow. Frederick Layton, Mr. and Mrs. Langtry. How do you do? No, you mustn't let Millet monopolize you. Uh, Mrs. Langtry, besides, he could never catch your coloring. Perhaps not, but I'm going to try. Gentlemen, please. Oh, Frank, not here. I hope you will remember that while they were in dispute, I was the first to catch you. Mrs. Langtry, this is Mr. Frank Miles. And your devoted admirer. Will you please accept this as my first tribute? Thank you. But I couldn't possibly accept it. Please, please, I insist. Besides, I intend to do many more. Mrs. Langtry, I'm sure you'd like to see some of Lady Seabright's paintings. Uh, may I? Yeah, please. Who is she now? Surely she can't just have sprung from nowhere like Venus from the foam. <laughs> her name is Mrs. Langtry. I met her last Sunday at the Rams. Ah, excuse me, Olivia. <laughs> I beg your pardon, uh, Mrs. Langtry? They say you're from Jersey. Do they mean New Jersey? Are you a country woman of mine? No, Jimmy, of mine. You can't claim her. This is James Whistler. James McNeil Whistler. You're going to sit for me, aren't you? I've already promised these gentlemen. Ah, and that's exactly what they are, gentlemen. But you need someone who can see beyond the classic features to the eternal woman. And you can? Yes, now that you mention it. Mm, I'll call on you, Mrs. Langtry, if I may, when we won't be interrupted by uh, this rabble. My dear, lots of other people want to meet you, but it will have to wait until after dinner. We're going in now. Who is going to escort Mrs. Langtry? Uh, may I? If I may have the honor. Gentlemen, let her choose. No, 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 we can't have that. She's to sit for me first. I'm her countryman. So I claim the privilege, allow me. Olivia. <laughs> That's it. John. 